Are we ready to try and shoot this thing? Hi, I'm Bert Sheffield of Heart Horse Dressage. This is my horse Wonky. We are going to do another of our real life training session videos today. Celebration 500 subscribers video. Um, thank you all for your support, it's been really great. Uh, if you go back through the channel, you'll see the evolution of Wonky's work. Oh, I'm so, so humbled by all the people that have given us support. It's been incredible. Today is a real life training session. We're four months on from the last time I did one of these. Beth has very kindly given up her Sunday evening to do this video for us. So I have to say a massive thank you to Beth Barkway for that. And we've just got on, it's freezing cold. I have two jackets on, which is why I look like the Michelin man. Wonky's got her rug on because she's clipped out. We're going for a fairly relaxed training session. She has had yesterday off and she did a small work on Friday. So she hopefully will be nice and fresh. Now, I mean, this is how real life this is. A couple of weeks ago, I was riding in here and our mirrors blew down. And you can see we've got battens holding the mirrors up at the end of the indoor school. I was actually in here riding her when the mirrors came down in the high winds. God knows how the wind got behind them, but they came flying out of their frames and smashed on the floor. But hopefully we will get new mirrors to put in those frames again soon. So the buttons are holding the mirrors to the left up. Usually I walk wonky for about 20 minutes at the beginning of a session with our rugs on. Uh, Beth was setting up the camera, so we've done sort of four or five minutes of walking. She's just starting session. So I just, first part is just getting her limbered up. Those of you that have watched a few of my videos, won't come this way, it's a good girl, will know that I do a lot of walk work. I do a lot of suppling work and walk at the beginning. I find this really helps all the horses, but most especially this horse. She's a 11 year old Geldlander cross. Good girl. She loves looking at herself in the mirror. You can always feel her suck a little bit towards the mirror. There's a good girl. She's my international horse. I'm hoping that we'll be selected for the Canadian team for the Tokyo Paralympics if it goes ahead. Um, that's our aim for next year. She's also, she's been with me since the start of her ridden career. Uh, I, I bought her when she was six. and At that point, she hadn't had a head collar on. She was unhandled. Um, good girl. She was bred for driving, not for dressage. So she's a little bit of an underdog horse, you might say. She's, uh, she's not strictly, you know, bred for the discipline, but she's, she has a lot of talent. She has the most amazing brain when you work with her. All she ever wants to do is give you 150% of whatever you ask her to do. Sometimes she, that makes her get a little bit anxious because she is trying so hard to please you. But she's, she's a good egg, aren't you girl? You're a good girl. So, because I'm a Paralympic dressage rider, I have a tendency to concentrate on my Paralympic tests. That means I do about 75% of the work we do is aimed at our, our tests. I'm a grade three, which means I do walk trot tests. I have a significant level of disability. Um, we don't show canter. We can show a little bit in our freestyle, but we don't need to. I first of all educate the canter in the horse simply to give them a basic education in three paces but I don't teach them the canter work in the beginning with the idea that I'm going to show it and then so her her canter work is not as advanced as her walk trot work it's becoming a little bit more balanced we are we have offline changes, we have the lateral work and we have working pirouettes, but they're not 
to the level of polish that our walk trot work is. I train her probably 50% of the time in the snaffle and 50% of the time in a double um, because, oh, sweetheart, you're getting ready. There's a good girl. I'm sponsored by Bomber's Bits and I've found that their bits have really helped her. She's much more relaxed in their bits than she was previously. I really like to wait till the horses have had a good snort, they've had a good breathe before I ask anything of them. You hear her, she's just letting go of any tension she's got. And just now her breathing's become a little more relaxed and she's starting to feel a little bit more ready. Good girl. Okay, now I'm going to start to pick her up. There's a good girl. Walk on. I like to do a lot of work in what Comrade Schumacher, when I was training with him, what he described as being a half long neck. So it's not a long stretched out disconnected frame. It's a and it's not a high competition frame. It's not a roll curve. I don't want the horse pulled back towards its chest. I want the horse somewhere nice and round in the neck. Good girl. Nice and under control in the neck with the horse relaxed and allowing the neck to fall. Meeting my hand, I want, but I want there to be connection. I don't want the connection to be too light. I want the horse stepping into my rein. And it helps you to get the horse secure in the back, get the horse lifting in the back, but it doesn't cause the horse to get tired in the back in the same way as having the horse up in a high competition frame. Whoops, don't fall over. There's a good girl. Okay, so we're now in a half long neck. Sometimes they come a little bit behind the vertical when they're in a half long neck, but as long as they're not crunched up tight in the pole, I don't have a problem with it. I don't want the angle at the pole to get any tighter than it would be if I brought the neck higher and had the horse in competition frame. But I do want a little bit of flexion at the pole so that I can get into the horse's body. The horse is not strung out and stiff in the pole. This neck position really helps with allowing the horse's back to swing and not get tense. Right. I'm just spiraling her in a little bit. I want her to bend around my inside leg, but I don't want her to fall against my inside leg or fall out through her outside shoulder. I want her to keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, good girl. And I want to feel the back start to come up underneath me. I want her to accept my leg, good girl, good girl, yeah, yeah. She's starting to try and fall out, come in, good girl. Now I'm going to encourage her to step a little bit out. I want her to leg yield off my inside leg, good girl. I want her to lift the thoracic sling as we come around, good girl. But not fall outwards, I want her to step outwards, good girl. And this is a really basic exercise but it is one of those basics of absolutely putting the horse around your inside leg, teaching the horse what the inside leg means, teaching the horse how to balance with bend, how to use the thoracic sling. Good girl. And as it is pretty cold, I think it's about somewhere between six and eight degrees. Come on, off my leg, good girl. I, I'm really aware that it is going to take her longer to warm up. It's, her muscles are going to be colder. She's not going to be as elastic as she would be in the height of summer. Certainly at the start of the session, hopefully when we're warmed up and we're sweating, then we'll be all nice and elastic. But at the moment, 
I have to be really sympathetic to the fact she's gonna be a little bit tighter. Make sure she's turning with an upright shoulder, not with a floppy shoulder to the outside. Make sure she's respecting my inside leg and not pushing the back of the rib cage at it. I don't want the hind legs to fall in. I want the shoulders to come around. Good girl. I'm gonna spiral out. Good girl. I don't wanna bring my lower leg back in the leg yield because I want the middle of the horse's rib cage, the bit directly underneath my hip, to be the bit that yields. I don't want to just swing the quarters out and have the quarters drag the rest of the horse outwards. Good girl. Good girl. Uh-uh, don't fall. Good girl. I'm looking for this lovely, regular, relaxed rhythm. I don't want her so active that she's get tight and tense. I want her to have time to swing her legs through their range of movement not have her chasing her feet to the ground in order to get the next step. I want a good overtrack. I want a nice attitude from her. Good girl. Where she feels happy and confident in the work. I'm pushing her out a little bit more. Good girl. There we go. Now she's starting to really fall through the neck a bit better. Now I'm going to take a little bit of bend down the track. Supporting the hip with my inside leg. Good girl. <laughs> oh, she spied the sugar in the corner. She wants to go and visit Beth. So, because this is her concave side, she has a tendency to try to bring the head to the inside and the hip to the inside. So we start off by just making sure I can put the hip so the inside foreleg steps between the two, sorry, the inside hind leg steps between the inside foreleg and the outside foreleg. So I have real control over the placement. So now we're gonna step a little leg yield across. She is pretty educated in her lateral work, so this is fairly easy for her. I wanna keep the emphasis still on stepping forward as well as sideways. She's not just running sideways in an exaggerated fashion and losing her balance. I still want nice feeling that she's stepping forward into the contact. Now I'm asking her to step off my inside leg into that little shoulder four kind of straight line with bend kind of feeling. She's starting to take a little bit more stretch. Good girl. a good girl. The surface in here is not particularly even. We've had a lot of lessons in here today. Good girl. So there's a bit of humps and hollows to deal with and I will try to avoid the worst of that when it comes to actually doing the really dynamic work. I don't want to trip her up. That's not fair but it's not that bad. It's just it's a working riding school. You're always, after you've been teaching lessons with multiple horses all day, there is going to be a little bit of disruption to the surface. So, come. Good girl. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. I love the fact she snorts. She lets me know. And now I'm going to do one of the really interesting little physio exercises that I like to do with my horses. We've got two jump poles set out. Good girl, come this way. We've got two jump poles set out in the arena. They've actually just been abandoned from a lesson, but that's fine. I'm going to walk her to the poles, slow down and step the front legs over and stop. I'm not worried about whether she's square or not. I just want her to settle and stand quietly over the poles. And then when she's kind of just 
I can feel her lifting her back up already. She's in anticipation because she knows what's coming. I'm gonna ask her to quietly step forward from the hind legs. The idea being, okay, stand up, good girl, that she has to lift her hind legs up with no momentum. She's actually got to just bend them. And it really helps to free up the horse's hips and the horse's back. So we're gonna step forward, good girl, yeah. Good girl. I'm just gonna do that a couple of times. It's a really nice exercise. She's got really good body awareness because she's done a lot of this sort of stuff. So she handles it better, but the first time you do this on a horse, really good body awareness, hey Wonks? Here's a good girl. I think someone might be a little bit complacent on this. There's a good girl. So let her relax, good girl. Good girl. Once more, see if we can not crash into the poles on our way over the first, first bit of the front legs. There's a good girl. Good girl. Oh, no, we're still gonna touch them, just so we know that they are, hey? Good girl. Wait at least three seconds, so the horse has a chance to almost forget a little bit about where the poles are. Good girl. I know. There's a good girl. And step forward. Good girl. Nice big step from the hind leg. I'm going to go into a traver on the long side. So this is like working against the the natural bend that's in her body. I'm making the stiff side concave. Shoulders stay fairly straight on the track. Head looks up the track. Quarters come a little bit to the inside and around the corner. Good girl. Little shoulder in on the long on the short side. I didn't plan that brilliantly, but hey. Into the corner. Traver out. Yeah, yeah, come. Stay forward. There's a good girl. The important thing is she stays in front of my leg. In this case, my inside leg is the one. There we go. And then I'm gonna ride into the corner and come through the corner in shoulder in. Just go short side and shoulder in. Good girl. Now go Trevor. Good girl. I wouldn't do all this lateral work if the horse wasn't booted up. It's really important when the, doing the lateral work that they are protected apart from obviously when we're competing but hopefully when we're competing they'll be in as perfect a balance as possible and they won't make mistakes and they won't bash themselves that's the idea so I'm now going to turn and I'm going to do a leg yield off my right leg down towards H I want her to stay in front of both my legs so she steps forward and sideways. She's not just going straight or she's not just going sideways. Good girl. Riding into the corner. Gonna come out of the corner in the traver, which she finds much easier this way because it's her, her concave side, so there's a good girl. Now I can really feel the back come up. She steps around. She feels really good. There's a good girl. Good girl. I don't know if on the microphone you can hear her breathing, but she's she's quietly breathing to herself. I feel that it's getting more purposeful in her breath. She's now going a little bit shoulder in. Towards the corner. Pick up the traver. Good girl. Good 
go. This is all our standard warming up stuff. This is nothing particularly special. It's just making sure she's on the age, she's respecting the leg, she's in balance, she's starting to become more supple. Her back's starting to pick up a bit better. That feels lovely. There's a good girl. She's nice and relaxed. Now I'm going to take this Trevor around the corner onto a circle. Good girl. See she's getting a little bit deeper because she's actually pushing her back higher up against the saddle. She's lifting me a little bit more. Come on. There's a good girl. She's lifting me a little bit more. She's almost, almost feels like she's trying to go into more of a half pass position. I have to control the positioning around the circle. So she's on the circle line and she's not across the circle line. There's a good girl. Keep my weight in my inside leg. Don't let it fall to the outside, which is much more difficult on the circle. Now I'm going to ride her forward and round onto a little bit of a shoulder in. Hey, 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 come on. Shoulder in on the circle. Again, this is much more difficult on the curved line. It requires her hind legs to step further than her front legs, so it stretches her a little bit in the hip. My legs again, really cold. I think I need better thermal britches this year. So she's in good girl. Stuff going on in the car park, there's all sorts of lights and things happening outside. Good girl. Comes around. Now I'm just gonna change my legs a little bit, tighten up the line. Good girl. Add a little traver. Let's see if I just make this circle a little bit smaller. Bring her a little bit more collected in the walk. Good girl. Good girl. smaller. A little bit smaller. She's still got to stay around my... Whoa, mm. there's a good girl. A little loss of balance. Smaller, but she's still got to stay around my inside leg. So she's lifting her ribs away from my inside leg. She's not just pushing and leaning over on them as she comes around. We're getting closer and closer to a pirouette. There's a good girl. Come on. Someone might ask, why am I doing this work now rather than doing it after I've trotted and cantered as part of my warm up? This work is all about activating the posture muscles in her back. The little tiny postural muscles, they protect her back. I'm going to let her out now. She says, oh, that's quite a long time in that exercise. Just let me walk forward. Yeah, there we go. Big stretch. Um, those little tiny postural muscles, they are so protective of the spine. You need to make sure that they are really switched on to protect her back, helping her lift the thoracic sling and just generally improving her posture before I ask her to do anything more dynamic. Partly because of her breeding. The Gelderlander breed is known for their high head carriage and their flat backs and their high tails. They are expressive, extravagant driving horses. They're not originally bred particularly to be ridden horses. So to get them working over their backs and really soft and supple and elastic and using their power in a way that we want ridden, we need to really, really major in on developing 
their posture and their, their strength over the back. Now I'm gonna pick her up and I'm gonna do a little bit of that travers shoulder in stuff this way. It's a good girl. Now we've got our clothes off. I'm gonna just make sure I've got the middle of her back. Get the thoracic right up under me. Little bit of shoulder floor positioning. Make sure I've got her. Make sure she's really with me. And then I'm gonna see if we can go into a little stretchy trip trot. There's a good girl. Good girl. There's little, little snorts, good girl, are really good. They throw, they show me that she's starting to relax. She's feeling her body. <laughs> she's looking at Beth in the corner dressed up like a, a gray bat. It's really not that scary, my love. There's a good girl. There's a good girl. So, I'm just gonna add a little bit of positioning. See if I can just get her to just soften her body a little bit. There's a good girl. We're losing a bit of that tension. Good girl. Oh. She wants to go forward. I want her to flex and bend a little bit more. I don't want her to run. I want her to concentrate and stop looking out of the door. There's a good girl. There's a good girl. She's still in a very soft frame. We have days when she stretches better at the beginning, but we will gradually work on that stretch until it becomes where I want it to be. Stretch is one of the first requirements of her, her work. She allows me to ride her from the inside leg on those diagonal aids into the outside brain. I'm gonna change the rein. So we're gonna come across this diagonal. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna push her off my new inside leg into my new outside hand. Good girl. There's a good girl. Inside leg goes on, but we don't run away. Good girl. In the side leg goes on, but we don't run away. We stretch into the outside right. There we go, now I feel the back. Back starting to come up a little bit more under me. Good, there's a good girl. Now I'm gonna push her off my inside leg into a little leg yield. To my new outside rein, my left rein. I'm shorten my reins a little bit. Ask her to slow down a little bit again. Ask her to slow down a little bit. Good girl. I want her to stay under my seat, not rushing away from my seat. There's a good girl. Now she's starting to feel like she's genuinely pulling in a really good way towards my hand. My hand is starting to feel like she's connecting to my shoulder rather than my fingers. Now I'm gonna flex a tiny amount. I'm gonna make it really straight, around, almost more of a diamond shape. Make sure she's really connected to my outside rein. She, she allows me to bring, there. Have control of the shoulder, there. Good girl. Allows me control of the shoulder. Good girl. 
and control of the shoulder again. Good girl. I'm going to push her off my left leg a little bit even more and take her in the new direction. Little touch off my right leg, little shoulder in on this side. Just want to have that feeling. I can move her around. Wait, she said, I know what's coming, you're going to ask me to go. No, good girl, and now forward again. Good girl, come back again. Let's go to run, let's go to circle. Ooh, circling monkey. Circling. That thing you don't particularly want to do. And then ask her to go again. So we're practicing like a tenth of a medium trot. I can practice the transitions backwards and forwards without so much wear and tear. I'm going to ask her for a good girl. Good girl. That's my transition back a little bit more. Good girl. Transition back a little bit more. Good girl. Transition back. Good girl and transition forward. I know. Unfortunately, that rather ruined the balance. Good girl. Just wanted to sneeze, is really making it hard to keep the balance. Good girl. And transition back. Good girl. Swinging through and forward. And bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, good girl, there, bring it back, keep the right hind under, bring it back, bring it back, good girl, look at that, Ooh. what a good lady you are. Okay, so now we've had a little walk, I'm gonna pick her up. I usually go walk to canter with her in the first instance. Canter is not a natural pace for her. She is a trotting, driving bread horse. So I find walk to canter helps me organize her canter better. And then we go back to trot to canter, canter trot because that is like the supreme exercise of getting the horse really through and over the back. But if I do that from the beginning, I end up with a horrible canter. So I have to start with my water canter first and establish the one, two, three jump. And we go through the body thing before we start doing the trot to canter. I think people often underestimate how difficult trot canter to canter trot is for horses, especially young horses. Uh, after all, we still have probably the most difficult transition in a Grand Prix is the passage canter transition. It's in there for a reason. It's in there because it's really difficult. The horses have to change the order of their legs, keep their balance, keep the cadence. Um, that you, you really do need to train it. Horses don't always naturally do the most beautiful trot canter transition into a really good canter. So I'm going to pick up the walk in a second. Here we go. If you ever watch any of the Robert Dover videos on Dressage Hub, here's a good girl, you'll know that he always says you need to have the energy for your collected canter in your walk before you canter. So let's get this walk jacked up a little bit. Here we go. Let's get a bit of energy in this walk. Got to have lots of activity. Got to have lots of throughness in the pole because I really want her to come up through her body 
not flip herself into counter on the under neck muscles. Whether you use Robert Dover's idea that the horse has got to have all this energy in the walk so the canter is just like the natural result of that or whether you have Conrad's idea where it's you want to ride the horse through the neck and the most important thing is that you have the neck and the back of the horse under control I'm going to put the neck under control and then I'm going to go this first canter transition I want to have the feeling that I've really got this neck and canter good girl see if I can find a slightly better canter my inside leg. Wait, we're coming around this circle, aren't we? Come. On. Yeah, and up, 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 up. Whoa. Good girl, that was better. I know it's stressful, isn't it, sweetheart? This cantering thing is not natural. Who knew horses were meant to find the canter a natural pace, eh? And canter. Good girl. I want her to canter up in front of me. So she canters in front of me. And now I'm going to ask for a T-R-O-T -T transition. She doesn't know how to spell, but she does know her words. If I said the, the T word, she would probably just do the T word straight away. So I'm going to push her a little bit off my inside leg. Push her off my inside leg. Push her off my inside leg. Sit, 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 sit. Find the balance, good girl. Back up. Half halt my outside rein. Give on the inside, push from my inside leg, find my trot. Good girl, find my trot. Good girl, and canter. Good girl, and find the jump again. Jump, 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 jump. Up, 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 up. Bring the shoulder a bit more. Good girl, and push, push, push. Push, push, push from my inside leg, outside rein, and find, yes, there's my trot transition. There we go. Didn't lose the back that time. She stayed on my hand in a good way. Stayed to my contact, she stayed moving forward from the right leg. Good girl. Let's see if I can get the counter transition the same way. Good girl. It's actually more difficult for her than you'd possibly imagine. You say, well, most four-year-olds can do that. Yes, most four-year-olds, but maybe not most four-year-old girlfrienders. Right. Up. Up. Collect a little bit more. Up, up. Good girl. Come on. Collect a little bit more. Up, up. And back into canter. Good girl. Up. Stay through your body. Stay through your body. There's a good girl. Now go forward. Whee! There we go, good girl. Stay off my inside leg. Let me collect you. There's a good girl. Let me collect you. There's a good girl. Stay off my inside leg. Stay off my inside leg. There's a good girl. Stay off my inside leg. There's a good girl. Now let me sit on my bum. Up, 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 up. Whoa into the trot, good girl. Now that trot feels lovely through the body. She's throwing me a little bit to the left, but there's a good girl. Now she's getting a little bit tight in the neck. Let's see if I get her to drop a little bit. Good girl. Let's see if I can just stretch a little bit without running away from my seat. Good girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit lower in the back. Then throw in the neck. Brings the back up a little bit. Now we're running a little bit. Stay on my seat. Don't run away from my seat. Good girl. There we go. Ooh. Stay on my seat. Don't run away from my seat. Good pony. Good girl. Who's a good little chicken, eh? I was a little late, but I'll take it. Now she's trying to run through the outside shoulder. Lose the neck. Come. 
Yes, there's a good girl. Up, up, up. Good girl. Come. Forward. Forward off my inside leg. Yes, I know. I got it, you. Yes, there we go. I know you're making some dust fly, aren't you? There's a good girl. Right, I want to have the feeling I have her in my outside brain. To have her in my outside brain. Come. Good girl. And then when I'm ready, I'll come back to three, two, one. Ooh. Good girl. Ah, uh ah, -uh, don't pull. Don't pull and shove at me. I know, life's difficult. There's a good girl. That's better. She finally allowed me into that outside rain. There's a good girl. Off my inside rain. Off my inside leg, not through your outside shoulder. Come. There's a good girl. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. The neck, the back's up now in a good way. And forward again. Good girl. And this might seem really basic counter work. We get the really basic counter work and then we get everything else relatively easily. Good girl. She's really into my outside rain. Good girl. Now I'm gonna see if I can get a TROT transition. Uh, uh, I've lost her. I've lost her. I've lost her. Come back into my outside rain. Back into my outside rain. There you go. Come on. There you get there. Jump through into my outside rain. Through your body. Through the body. Through the neck. Through the back. Come on. You can do it. Come on. You did it earlier. You can do it again. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really having to use my back to support her and help her coming around. Good girl. Now I'm going to take her a little bit quarters in. There. Good. And forward. Forward into that contact. Through the body. Good girl. And round the skull. Come. Through the body, good girl. Now I'm just gonna let her walk off for a little bit, and then we'll have a little stretching trot, and then we'll go back to walk for the final. We have to really get our heart rate down. Whew. That's made me work hard. Oh, you know, I just realized that Beth stood there in your rug, hey? Oh, you don't want me to arrange your golden locks, hey? He's a good girl. Okay, that, that wasn't the greatest training session we've ever had in the world. Um, but not every session is. I thought we had some nice pieces of work and then we had some bits that were a little bit rougher and then we had some nice bits again. I found a nice place to finish where she felt really loose and through and elastic. It is it is training, so you're always gonna, come on. Training is not always giving you sugar, hey? Um, it's all about pushing things a little bit to the point where there are rough edges, introducing things which cause us to then not do them perfectly, um, asking for a little bit more, accepting a little less. When you're training a horse, you're training a horse, it's, it's not just about consolidation, doing the same thing over and over again every day in the same way. It's, I'm trying to further her education in a session. So I'm really conscious always there's only a certain number of steps within a horse's legs or within their body. You only ever have a certain number of rides on a horse. You don't get to know how many of those rides are 
but you know, every ride you have on your horse is one less you're going to have in the future. So make those rides count. Don't just float around the arena doing exactly what you did the day before and hoping that by doing the same thing you're going to get a different or better result. The whole time you're riding you need to be evaluating what you do, um, deciding whether you want to keep pursuing what you're doing or whether you want to change now and try something else. Is it working? Is it not working? Is it going to work in a second? Is it just that the horse needs that next moment to find it in their body? Um, it's all about just you're constantly evolving in the middle of a training session. It's it's not ever a stuck in stone thing. This is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm always conscious of things that I want to include or things I think would be a good idea, but I'm, I'm wanting to use my toolbox. I'm not wanting to use three exercises and then call it a day. I found this way of training horses. I don't end up with horses that are sour in the arena. They don't seem to get bored. I think this one's quite tired. It's a good girl. She feels quite tired. She's just catching her breath again. She's put a lot of herself into what we do. And I always want to match. She puts so much of herself in. I need to put myself into a session as well. Um, we're a partnership. I can't expect her to give me 100% effort if I'm worrying about what I need to buy from the shops or something else that's going on in my life. If you've managed to make it this far, please subscribe, um, hit the bell, and then you'll get new videos as I make them through to your inboxes. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you've got this far, I think you definitely need a gold star for effort. I hope this has been helpful for you training your horses. And I think this is Wonky Horse and I over and out for tonight. Good night, bye.